Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are and uh, wherever you're viewing. My name's Tim from Libanus and we're thinking about the fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to read from the book of Galatians, chapter uh, 5 and verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that they do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. If we all were to live in such a way as is described in verse 22, there'd be no need for policemen, would there? There'd be no need for uh, law authorities because we would live in such harmony and, and peace. This book of Galatians is all about God's grace in Christ Jesus. And the Apostle Paul is dealing with those who want to kind of push that aside and say, no, it's about the things that you do and the, the works that you do. And so it's easy from that to say, well, it doesn't matter, therefore, what we do. And that's not the Apostle's point. That's not Paul's point at all. Paul's point is, is this. In order to be a Christian, it's entirely God's work and God's grace. And God is at work in us through his spirit. And his spirit, who is God, poured out upon his people, gives to his people the graces to live in similar character, in like nature, to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is, if you like, the character of the new man. And that's uh, the first uh, point of interest here. This is not the description which we strive for to earn our way into heaven. No, rather, this is the description of somebody who's already heaven bound to live in accordance uh, with their citizenship. If your citizenship is in heaven, then you're representing heaven. If your citizenship is of one who has been saved by God's grace in Christ Jesus, then our behaviour, our character should match that. And the example that um, the apostles given is of um, uh, this new man or this new person uh, taking off the old rags that are no longer suitable for the new person and putting on the clothes, the character that is suitable for the new person. The new man is God's work. And it's important that we don't put their cart before the, the horse. There's lots of people that have said, well, I'm not good enough for um, heaven. I'm not good enough to be a Christian. And you're never going to be good enough to be a Christian. And Christians are those who realise that they're not good enough and they've sought the Lord Jesus Christ 
and they've realised that his blood shed on a cross is for them to make them clean, that they need forgiveness. It's not earning their way to heaven, it's accepting God's gift. But then God having worked in the individual's life, there is this what's often called a dual work. As God is working in us, so we are working out what that means in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit is the outworking of the planted seed of God. The seed that goes into the, the ground on a tree or a fruit uh, sprouts, sets out roots, grows and becomes fruitful. You need the plant, you need that new life before you can get uh, the fruit, before you can get uh, good fruit. And, and that's the, the way uh, we're to think of it. Now here the word for fruit um, is a, a singular word, it's not fruits as if they're a collection of damsons and melons and apples and um, whatever else, peaches, whatever else there might be fruit wise, as if they're from different trees. The idea here is that there is one spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, who comes into the life of the believer and works in them in such a way that this this fruit is is produced. And it, it's like, uh, we could say it's like, in, in some senses, it's like an orange that you, it's one fruit, but there are different segments um, to it. And they're integral, and yet they can be defined in different ways. And that's perhaps the best way of, of looking at it. They work together. You can't take one out of the other. For example, you can't say, well, this is. I've got love but not patient because love is patient. You can't say I've got kindness but not patient because kindness and patience often go together. And so the, the fruit, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit making us more like Christ in the life of the believer and they fit together. They fit together in such a way that sometimes it seems very difficult to try and separate them out. But nevertheless, we're going to try and do that to help us understand here what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. And we'll we'll start in the, the order that they're given. But that's that's for next time. Recently, I was looking at an article and it was not a Christian article. It was a, an advertising blurb for um, a seller of men's um, shirts and trousers and um, uh, the like. And in this um, article, it, it it said that the, the person who was writing, it said that they saw someone after lockdown and it was in Congress because they had um, like a jacket and uh uh, shirt and seemed all tidy but then was really scruffy it was like a mixture of before lockdown and lockdown and it, it it didn't appear right and in the same way if we're lacking in one area of this fruit of the spirit we don't look right we look lop Side it. And so there they fit together. We wouldn't dream, would we, of, of dressing uh, like a, a tramp, uh, like a, a vagrant, whatever we want to, to, to call them, um, a down and out, uh, and um, turning up at a, a posh do like that. Because the, the clothes don't match the occasion and the event. And so it is with the, the Christian. 
if we're servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we love him, if we know him, if we know what he's done for us, then the clothes should match that uh, reality. They should demonstrate that I am a, a new person. The fact is that we all struggle with this because we all fail and we're all sinners and we all continue to sin. Saved by grace we are. New creations we are. Um, we are not what we used to be. But we're not where we want to be either. And so it is for all of us to strive to live for Christ, but not in our own power, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Notice what it says in verse 18. It says, but if you are led by the Spirit, well, we need to be led by the Spirit. Ask God each day. Help us, Lord, that we might be led by the Spirit. Well, thank you uh, so much um, for listening to that introduction. And uh, we pray that God would grant us grace, that we might live by the Spirit. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your salvation. Any listening who don't know it, Lord, pray, please um, move upon their souls. May they call out to you and find grace. And for Lord, for us who believe and love the Lord Jesus, help us to live for you. Help us to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, for those who want a, a, a closing hymn, maybe, uh, God of grace is one that seems suitable. May the Lord bless our thinking uh, together. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>